Hello, and welcome to another Cervantes Fast class. My name is Travis, and I am a senior solutions consultant here. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the details surrounding transitioning your processes from the outbound marketing module to real-time journeys and Dynamics 365 customer insights journeys. In today's class, we will walk through the primary functionalities of each app and kind of compare outbound to real-time functionalities and what steps you may need to take when moving over. If you aren't already aware, Microsoft has just announced last month, August 2024, that after June 30th, 2025, the outbound marketing module will be removed from the marketing app. This means that we've got a little under a year to transition into real-time journeys. I'll also mention right here at the start that the social post feature in Outbound is being entirely removed in December 2nd, 2024. So if you do currently use the app for social posts, you'll want to be looking into alternatives now as it won't be available in either Outbound or real time. Aside from that, some of the things we'll talk about today will have been discussed in previous FAST classes as well. So you can check those out if you're looking for maybe a little bit more of the specifics regarding a certain feature. As always, though, I, uh, we've got some of my colleagues in the chats so that can answer any of the questions you've got as you have them. To start off with, let's talk about the difference in the general approach to marketing that real time provides. Outbound, for the most part, is you set up your segments for, of your contacts based on existing pieces of, of data and then send emails through journeys, either as you know one off email blasts or through a series of branching conditional paths. And what's great is that if that's really all you need out of the marketing app, then you don't need to worry about any drastic changes to your process when you're transitioning. As Microsoft has iterated on real-time journeys module, you know, over the last couple of years since it's been out, pretty much everything that can be done in outbound is able to now be done in real time as well. However, where real time, you know, really shines in is, is in its ability to offer much more in-depth personalization of the content you send, when you send it, and to whom you're sending it. And I'll just start off with something that's kind of familiar. We're going to look at segments. So all of our past outbound marketing segments still exist and can be used perfectly fine in real time. Uh, Microsoft does recommend rebuilding some of your more frequent ones that you use in real time designer as it has a bit better performance when it comes to refreshing the members of dynamic segments. Real time also has the advantage of being able to directly target leads. In outbound, you always had to use the contact record as your baseline and go through related tables to get at leads. And then the designer itself also just makes it a whole lot easier to deal with getting related tables like events and check-ins and event registrations and stuff for the behavioral segments is works a lot easier in real time is much more responsive as well. Now let's look at the email designer. Functionally, it works pretty much the exact same as outbound, but when you dig into it a little bit, you'll see a lot of new features and options. For example, the general styles tab here in outbound is pretty basic, but when we look at it in real time, we have all these additional options for different text styles. We have buttons, links, you know, much easier custom fonts, and even like a color palette that we can set up for the email. You know, it's really nice to finally have this because we don't have to like copy paste things like the buttons. You know, once we've customized it, one button, we can just have that same button element once we've styled it here. There's a lot of small quality of life things like those, but my personal favorite is this personalized tab up here. I did a whole fast class about this a while back, but this tab is super cool. So basically you can do all sorts of conditional content and personalization options. You know, in outbound, you are limited to fields that exist on the contact record for like dynamic content um, and related tables as the kind of the personalization you can do. Whereas now in real time, we can have entire chunks of content that can be swapped around depending on these attributes. So for example, say you want a different uh, image and intra paragraph depending on the state or lead the contact is in you can add conditional content to have different variations that will change you know depending on whatever attributes you or conditions you're wanting to set for those contact or leads receiving the email 
Um, if you want to avoid, you know, things like the weird empty spaces that might have shown up when a contact or lead doesn't have a specific piece of information that you might have had for a dynamic contact, you can also do a check to see that it's not empty when you're doing your conditions for that. Now let's take a look at journeys. Journeys in real time can be either segment-based or trigger-based. Segment-based journeys function basically the same as they've been in outbound. Um, but trigger-based journeys are where you can get really creative with a lot of this. So custom journey triggers can kick off customer journeys that are based on essentially any action a contact or lead takes on, you know, your website, forms, emails, text messages, and even, you know, mobile apps if your company has one. A lot of triggers do come stock with fresh installs of real-time journeys. So, you know, kind of just browsing through the list, you can see all sorts of ideas. And you know, some may require some additional send up depending on the media channel, but browsing through them may help spark ideas for what is possible, you know, whether it be, you know, s clicking on an email uh, or interacting with like a marketing page that you have. Um, and some of them may require additional setup there, but you can always talk to us at Savantis for help with custom triggers. Then I'm going to just quickly jump into a journey here to kind of show how it works. And how it looks similar to emails, it's you know functionally the same sort of designer here. Um, we've got the same sort of tiles available. You know, a neat thing is that triggers uh, aren't really limited to just you know starting journeys. They can also be used to end journeys here with this exit tab. Um, it allows us to set alternative exits to the journey rather than just completing all the steps. So if the contact activates a particular trigger while they're going down this customer journey, or if like they're if they become a member of a segment, then they'll be removed from the journey and you know cut off. So they're not going to be receiving any extra emails that may not be relevant to them anymore once they've taken that particular action. Another great thing is that we've also got built-in cross-journey and cross-channel analytics through Power BI dashboards. I also did a fast class on this one walking through the cross-journey analytics dashboard. Uh, I think it's super cool to have this better visibility into the data just out of the box. And it may not be you know, perfect to your business, you know, like a custom Power BI report might be able to do, but you know, it's a heck of a lot better than having to dig through you know, each individual journey or email if you're trying to get more of those insights and analytics. Now to step back out of the familiar features, I'm gonna talk briefly about consent management. We've also done a whole fast class on this that I do highly recommend you check out if you're not fully familiar with the consent setup in real time already, as I'm not really gonna be able to confit to sufficiently cover everything now. Uh, looking at how outbound is set up with consent, it's all done at the contact level, meaning that the contact will, you know, opt in or opt out of bulk emails that you may have seen, you know, those fields on the contact record. Whereas in real time, the, the consent management is focused at the contact point, meaning like email addresses and phone numbers. What this means is that if there's ever a contact that unsubscribes from an email, but there happens to be a duplicate, duplicate contact or lead that has the same email address, real time will be will be looking rather at this contact point consent record for the email address and not send uh, emails to either of those contacts, even if they're both in the same journey, as, as long as one of them has unsubscribed. Whereas in outbound, they would, the app would only really know if contact A unsubscribed and still try to send the contact B. Along with that, there are compliance profiles, double opt-in, preference and subscription centers, and more. And again, I do highly recommend checking out our fast class on consenting compliance or any of Microsoft resources on the topic. When you're transitioning over from outbound, uh, Microsoft does recommend initially focusing on your journeys and emails, and then transitioning your consents by creating you know, a preference center and compliance profiles and you know, loading in your consent, your contact point consent records. Now, moving back into something that's a little bit more familiar, we're gonna have marketing forms. So marketing pages and marketing forms have been combined into one with real time. So in outbound marketing, you would create your marketing form and then you would either use the the embed script to embed it on your third-party website, or you'd then create a marketing page and load the form on that to have it hosted by the marketing portal. 
Speaking of the marketing portal, um, you've probably heard about it that it hosts like your marketing pages and and if your event pages and like your subscription center as an example. Um, that marketing portal is no longer utilized at all in real time. All the infrastructure uh, for that has been internalized, so it's a lot less annoying to deal with. Uh, some of you may have had to deal with issues of renewing portal authentication keys every year. Um, that can be a little bit annoying. But all of that now is, is done directly in real time, and so forums will be hosted on their own without needing to you know, create a separate marketing page, and you can still embed them on external websites if you want to. However, because of this fundamental differences uh, in the infrastructure, the forms cannot be automatically transitioned from outbound and will need to be remade in real time. Uh, and like I said, the forms can still be embedded on external sites and form captures are still possible, um, though they require you to toggle them on in the feature switches of the settings area. And just let us know if you need help doing that. Switching gears, let's uh, discuss events a little bit now. So the general setup process for events isn't going to change. Events are only really being affected by the switch uh, away from using the marketing portal, um, You know, rather than having that default event registration page that some of you may be familiar with, uh, just the registration form is provided and can be hosted you know, the same, same way as other real-time forms, you know, either through the internal hosting infrastructure or embedded on an external site. A big improvement on the event front is that you will only ever have to create one journey for all of your registration confirmations and reminders across all of your events. This is done through the use of trigger-based journeys and conditional slash personalized content in emails. Uh, it is a big reason why I said the conditional and personalized content are one of my favorite features. Um, emails can be used Emails can pull content from triggers. So for example, if a contact registered for an event trigger can pass details on an event to an email, um, we can change the content that's displayed in the email um, based on what the event that is registered for and then what is sent to the customer. And then similarly, any sort of follow-up reminders or you know, join, like if it's a webinar, join links or confirmation emails can be done all through one journey that you only have to have set up once. Event management uh, will include the same function sh functionality as in Outbound, but not all of it is live as of yet. Um, we'll have a comparison table that should be showing up for you so you can see what is available now and what is still being developed. Uh, the planned items that are shown on that table um, will eventually be available and we'll be wanting to check Microsoft's re release wave plans for more info on that. Uh, when these features become available, we'll be sure to keep you updated, whether that be through blogs that go out in our newsletters or fast classes that demonstrate functionality. And those are really the main details of what to keep an eye out for when you're working on the transition from outbound to real time. Uh, as a reminder, June 30th, 2025 is that deadline for an outbound will no longer be available with December 2nd, 2024, being the date of social postings removal entirely. If you don't plan to do much outside of the same sort of email marketing as you currently do in Outbound, uh, there really isn't actually that much of a profound difference between the two modules. I think the consent and compliance profiles are gonna be the main piece that has major differences in the process, but luckily a lot of that should just be a mostly one-time setup sort of deal. Regardless of what it is, if you have any questions or you aren't sure about any, about something as you're doing the, your transition, you can reach out to us at Savantis for help. There are also those other real-time journeys fast classes that we've done and will be doing in the future. And on the topic of fast classes, that's the end of this one. I appreciate you joining me today. Stick around to see next week's topics and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.